So creating Chappie from beginning to end and onto the screen was ultimately a big challenge, but we knew where we were going from the start. We got the original concept art that Niels spent months working through with Weta, sent to us as sort of 2D sketches. And then rather than building them practically first, we actually fully realized them uh, three-dimensionally at Image Engine. It's one thing to sketch something out on paper. It doesn't always translate like you could sketch it and then it's like, wow, I can't actually raise his leg because this piece of metal's in the way. We started sharing our digital models with, with Weta, Weta Workshop. And then there was another back and forth between the two of us that would further refine the design because they obviously had to build a practical model. And there were some things that we would do and they'd be like, that structurally won't actually work for us. His, you know, his leg would fall off. And so we're like, okay, and we'd go back and we'd tweak things. And we had to build most of the pieces in 3D to be 3D printed. So they had to be solid objects that fit together the screen they were going to put in, like it, the head had to come apart so they could put it together. So hardcore industrial design, like you can't cheat. We had to build this thing to spec. We looked at a lot of reference and they needed to see how a certain shoulder or, or you know, how the waist would pivot or the neck or what kind of mechanism needed to be built to drive those pistons or whatnot to make them work. No ball joints was a, was a really big thing that uh, you know, Chris didn't want to see in anything because that you know, was a cheat in his mind. The pipeline that they already had worked out for District 9 was able to be transposed for us for Chappie. It's just a case of doing that same process with the main character on set in a grey suit and then them animating over top of that. That's where Image Engine really comes into play where they basically create Chappie from, what, from the palette of what Shalto has given them. Shalto is acting as a robot but behaving in, in human terms. So he does, you know, things that people would normally do. He interacts, he drives cars, shoots guns. Some of those things we totally take for granted and the nuances of some of that stuff, even set decoration choices play huge roles in the visual effects. Inside of the D'Antward van, they chose these like leopard print fuzzy seats, which, you know, from a visual perspective, sure they're neat, but for a visual effects artist who has to go and reintegrate Chappie's holding these things and painting out Charlto, it's a huge challenge. The most challenging part of doing that look development on Chappie was to make him wet in one sequence of the movie where he gets rained on. The raining scene, the King Crime Den, just making that look real. There was a lot of uh, 2D enhancement on top of the CG, uh, restoring the rain. Uh, we had uh, little 2D raindrops we had to put back in. We had to go cut out and reposition some of the splashes in the scene so they actually bounced off Chappie accurately. It was definitely a lot of work. It's dead, Chappie. Yeah, it's gone to the next place, Daddy. In the middle of the movie, there's a section where Chappie is uh, being kicked out into the, into the real world and uh, he gets beaten up by a bunch, a bunch of youths. And at one point, he gets a Molotov cocktail thrown at him. And on set, they actually had uh, a stuntman in the grey suit hit with a Molotov cocktail with some explosion on the back and then he's running off down the road while he's still on fire. Problem then is that we've got to replace all of that with Chappie. All that gets painted out, Chappie gets put into the shop and then we build our fire on top of that. There's not just the fire, there's the liquid of the petrol that's in there. We did have to look at reference to see what exactly burning metal looked like. We had um, a lot of footage of things like riots and so forth with burning cars and things like that. What's interesting with that shot is you can kind of see um, a lot of the different uh, aspects of Chappie's shading. You know, like you can see how the brightness of the explosion reflects off his body armor, the lights on his shoulder, like the highly reflective interior parts of the lights will be much more reflective. Moose was a challenging character for us. There was a lot of design back and forth in terms of how physically is Moose even going to be able to move? Like, what are the mechanics behind it? We had concept art that was great and quite an iteration process on the weapons that he has. Neil wanted him to be fairly outfitted in terms of his destructive capabilities. And so there was some fun, creative back and forth that we were allowed to get involved with. The Moose sequence is a little bit different because you can't have a gray suit performer um, that's standing there that everyone's reacting to or that we can even reference. The art department made a giant 
huge plywood cutout that we painted gray that was kind of a cross section, you know, a front on and a side view of, of the silhouette of Moose. And, and that would help sort of set up a general volume of where he needed to be and give the actors uh, some eye lines. And once everyone had that sense of volume, we stopped using that. And actually one of our uh, data wranglers, we had a, a huge pipe with a, with a ball on it. And that was, he would just run around and he would block out the story beats of what Moose would do in a shot. And then in addition to that, he's got these giant, vertical takeoff and landing rockets on either side of them, the blast dust everywhere. Um, so there was a lot of help from the um, special effects crew on set, you know, blowing things around with, with wind machines and things like that. We got an idea of what the moose looked like, but we had these, <laughs> one of those hover choppers that was that had a camera on it up and down. So we had to try and uh, imagine the size of it when we had a little helicopter about this big, you know, giving us an idea of where, we, where our eye lines and that should be. If you get the movement wrong, you quickly lose scale, you lose the ominous sense that you've gained through, throughout the film, seeing him standing there and seeing these big guns and all this. He's a tank, essentially, on legs, so you want to you want to have a real good sense of weight. A guy on set holding a pole with an X on the top that says, this is the top of Moose, and he starts walking through a shot, and that dictates the camera movement. So you now have to match that camera movement in your animation, still conveying all the intricacies of his movement, and then adding a little bit of clumsiness or loose jointedness in his arms, say, as he walks, to sort of get that point across that he is still a robot in development and not quite market ready. This morning, we're going to replicate uh, Moose exploding. It's a CG shot, but uh, we need actual fiery elements and flames. The detonation is here. Yeah. Right? Right. So, so this is correct, but I think it's it, like you treat it kind of like a shape charge. Yeah, mm -hmm. So when it goes off, it blows through the front here, and it yeah. severs. Yeah, it severs the legs. Yeah. That's basically how I think of it, right? Sure. When moose gets blown up, it's it's got to be big. It's got to be. Um, it, it's got to look real. We've got to add additional fire to the stuff that they've they've added on set. The moose is messed up. Ultimately, the true test for Chappie will be if people forget that he's CG.